Now that I have my own studio for my creative work, I want to dedicate an area of it for workshopping my ideas outside of a digital screen. A space for my tools, prototypes, and project materials, and a place to sketch, build, and collaborate with others. Hello, I'm Matthew Encina, and in this video, I'll share the process of building out my design workshop, which includes a giant work table, movable project walls, and my storage solutions. Before I begin, I want to thank Roborock for sponsoring this video. More on that later. If you've been following along in my studio design series, you've seen me plan and build my custom cabinets, desk setup, and lounge area. Now I'm going to focus on the workshop corner of my office. This space will be used for the physical artifacts of my projects that exist outside of the computer and need a place to reside. My goals for this space are to have an oversized surface to work on, lay things out, and congregate around, have storage solutions to hide unsightly items like tools and leftover materials, and have workable wall surfaces for pinning, writing, and hanging project artifacts. The biggest challenge with this project is balancing utility and aesthetic. I need practical storage solutions that keep my items accessible but hidden when not in use to keep the place looking organized. I first sketch out various ideas to help me think through different solutions. For the ideas that are viable, I build them out in Shaper 3D. This is the 3D software I use to build my entire office to scale so I can visualize it and plan out all of the dimensions of the furniture I would build and buy. If you want to learn more about how I use this app in my process, check out the blog post I linked in the description. After several weeks of iterating solutions, I landed on this design, which I'll break down for you. Starting with the giant work table at the center of the studio that's pretty on the front and practical on the back. The front features an edge-to-edge -edge white oak plywood that covers the backside of the table. The back provides extra storage space for containers, a shop vac, and a built-in bin for off-cut pieces. The table height is 35 inches, comfortable for me to work on standing or reaching across. I'm keeping things simple by designing everything around a single 4x8 sheet of white oak plywood for the top, built on an H-shaped base for support. The next part of the workshop are these multi-purpose project walls with different features on each side. One wall has a modular pegboard for storage, while the other is a whiteboard for impromptu notes. The project walls are mobile and can be moved around the space as dividers, or they can be lined up together to create a backdrop. Both walls have a front surface that can be used to pin up papers and printouts, and they help as sound treatment for the room. I finalized the design, double check measurements, and used Cutlass Optimizer to fit all the pieces on four 4x8 four white oak plywood sheets. To save time, I'll have my lumber shop cut down the pieces for me. If you want to learn more about this process, check out the episode where I built my custom cabinet storage. My dad comes over to help me, and we first prep the pieces by adding edge banding to any plywood core that would be visible once the table was built. To join the table pieces together, we use pocket holes and screws, which makes it easy to assemble without glue and deconstruct when moving out. I use my Craig jig to first create pocket holes about six inches apart for long pieces and one to three inches apart for short edges, then follow up with pocket hole screws. The challenging part when using pocket holes is to hide them because they aren't the prettiest to look at. I considered that in the overall design so you wouldn't see any evidence of joinery from the front side of the table. Since this is a long eight foot table, I wanna give it additional support in the middle. So I added four inch aprons under the top. To my surprise, we were able to build the entire table in one day. It took weeks to design, but because I prioritized simplicity, it made the build process so easy. To finish the surfaces, I used the same general finish high performance flat that I use on the rest of my furniture, which offers decent protection while minimizing amber tinting of the wood. For the large surfaces, I use a deck applicator pad to apply the finish which is much faster than using a brush and smoother than a roller. Thanks to Pat Donovan on Instagram for the tip. After two even coats and time to dry, the last step was to burnish the table surface using printer paper to give it an ultra smooth finish. Before we continue, a word from our sponsor. As you can tell by now, keeping my office clean and organized is a top priority for me, but I don't always have the time set aside for it. 
That's where the sponsor of today's video, Roborock, comes in. The Roborock S8 Pro Ultra is an automated robot vacuum packed with smart features made for the challenging characteristics of my space. I have polished concrete floors with rugs, and the S8 Pro Ultra is equipped with dual brushes and a vibrating mop to clean both types of surfaces. When it reaches my elevated carpet, the mop retracts so the brushes can go to work. It's perfect for cleaning up any shedding from my rug or dust and dirt left behind from my projects. Things are always moving around in my studio, but because the S8 Pro Ultra has a 3D obstacle avoidance system, it can avoid 3D objects in its path. The best part is that it empties and refills itself when it docks, and it can even wash and dry the mop. The Roborock S8 Pro Ultra can clean a thousand square feet in a hundred minutes, so my entire office is cleaned within one sprint of work. Not having to worry about cleaning gives me my time back to focus on my creative work. Thanks to Roborock for sponsoring this portion of the video. Check out the link in the description to learn more. The next part of the project is to build the multi-purpose project walls, starting with the wall framing. While most people use 2x4s for wall framing, I chose to utilize the leftover plywood from my table instead. It's lightweight, which minimizes the need for a heavy base, and it matches the rest of the white oak in my space. The frame is 4x8 feet and is made up of three vertical and two horizontal pieces. This size allows us to use full sheets of materials for the front and back. Corner clamps hold the pieces together, and we use countersunk construction screws to join the frame. For the base, I stack two 24 by 4 inch pieces of plywood, which I glue together and join with screws. These attach perpendicular to the frame using construction screws. The challenge here was to make sure the screws went in deep enough to secure the pieces together, while avoiding places where the screws might run into each other at cross sections. To address this, I alternate between screwing on the outside edges and then closer to the middle on any adjacent sides. With the frame created, we move on to applying the faces onto the frames. We begin with the fronts, which are made of quarter inch hardboard. These will serve as backing for the acoustic treatment that will be placed over them. For one of the back sides of the project walls, we install a quarter inch dry erase marker whiteboard material. And for the other wall, we use a quarter inch pegboard which I painted the same white as the cabinets in my office. Here are a few tips to keep in mind. The sheets used for these faces are typically listed as four by eight feet in measurement, but they're actually an extra inch longer on each side. So be sure to account for this and trim off the excess if necessary. For the whiteboard and pegboard, I use screws directly on their face and want to hide them. So my brother showed me this trick on how to paint all the screw heads quickly. Start by drilling holes in a box to hold your screws, insert them, and spray paint them to match your face material. This is an efficient way to coat everything evenly and give them a place to dry. To finish the base of the project walls, I add roller skate casters to make it mobile, rolling smoothly and quietly. These come with fastener inserts, which I install into the stacked wooden legs. We don't have the right tool to screw these in, but my dad is a resourceful guy and points out that this set of pliers will do the job fine. You don't always have to buy a new tool to make something work if you have an eye open for problem solving. Although the entire frame is relatively lightweight, I want to reinforce the joint at the base and help prevent tip over. While walking through the hardware store, I came across these steel T-brackets commonly used in structural framing. I thought this could be a minimal and effective way to add support to the base. Unfortunately, these are designed to work with 2x4s and our stacked plywood base is a little short for this. So my brother has the idea to drill extra holes in the brackets to adapt them to our base. This allows us to use both a top and bottom set of screws. With the base complete, it's ready to stand up and move on to the final step of this build, adding the pin board surface. When I was designing these walls, I discovered a company called Feltright that makes an interesting tile product that helps with acoustic dampening and doubles as a pin board. So I reached out to them about this project and they were kind enough to send me a few tiles to help me finish my walls. I'll leave a link to their website in the description. The felt tiles come in various sizes and colors and you can plan out your own pattern using their website. I wanted something simple, so I ordered 16 two by two foot tiles in the ash color to cover up the front of my project walls. To install these, I used the adhesive that came with the tiles, which are easy to mount. A note here, the actual size of each tile is about a quarter of an inch smaller than two by two, so it left a small gap around the edges. A minor gripe, 
but the end result still looks amazing. The last part of this workshop is to figure out storage solutions. Outside of tools, other materials, samples, prototypes, and works in progress need to be stored. The main goal is to hide as much of these as possible while keeping them accessible. I bought two sets of high volume stacking bins from the container store, which are great for large items like paint cans. I stack these on small dollies so I can easily wheel them out from under the table. For medium and small items, I use these storage containers from Sidio. They're a Los Angeles-based company that makes a rugged crate system with fantastic accessories. Notably, the divider system that allows you to compartmentalize each crate to keep items organized. Other helpful accessories are the latch lids, dry erase labels, and wheelbase to stack your crates on. I got these in the clear colorway, but in my cabinets, I also have them in tan, which I'm using to organize my camera gear. I highly recommend these because they're durable, stylish, and helpful for organization. All of these containers easily roll out when I need to access the hidden offcut storage I built underneath the table. This long eight foot bin is the perfect size to hold all of the usable materials left over from my projects here at the studio. For my tools, I bought a large metal cabinet on wheels. The cabinet has several adjustable shelves inside, hosting my toolbox, power tools, jigs, accessories, and a few containers of miscellaneous screws. It can close up and tuck neatly behind my project walls. For the pegboard wall, I bought a few components to organize my shop vac parts and clamps. The nice thing about pegboard systems is the flexibility to adapt and modify them over time. Whether I need a shelf, hook, or basket, there are so many parts available to configure it to my changing needs. When not in use, I keep my pegboard turned around to keep this area looking neat. Now that my design workshop is complete, let's take one more look at the before and after. Having this area of my studio has provided so much utility for my creative projects. Recently, I've been wrapping up a big project that I'm releasing soon in collaboration with Grogmade. We've been using this space to review sketches, prototypes, and document our process. Having this space to lay things out, react to them, and move them around is enriching to the collaborative process. The generously sized table has been the perfect place to offload and assemble large items. When I need to access tools, I can easily roll them out and put them away out of sight. And when I'm not working, this becomes my favorite place to sit down, take a break, and have a meal. In the future, I have more plans for this area of the office, which includes setting up lights to help me shoot tabletop content. If you want to follow how my studio develops and the work I do in it, consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed this episode and want more, check out the entire series playlist linked in the description. Coming next in the studio design series, I'll be sharing my coffee setup and how I'll be designing the last few parts of my office. If you have a question, ask and I'll do my best to answer. With that out of the way, it's time to get back to work.